can you believe it? No, I can't. After everything that happened in game one? It feels like a dream, but I don't want to wake up. After how bad they were? The worst. And they took my advice and they beat them. I know, I can't wait. Oh my goodness, finally! Country! Deal with it. Deal with Smash! Oh, and Rubowski. GTFO. I got it from a bar. <laughs> For the first time ever in a playoff video, I get to say, Leafs win 4-2 over the Boston Bruins in Game 2, tying up the series 1-1. Behold the mighty Bruins, Leafs Nation. A worthy adversary any day of the week. But know this, they are not immortal. The Leafs kept fighting fire with fire against the Bruins, and that's why they lost. They fought fire with water and won. The Bruins are bigger and badder. That's just how they are. But they got speed and skill, too. But I am willing to bet that the Leafs have more of that, and they used it in Game 2. That's why they won. And all the emphasis is going to be on how the Leafs finally managed to just crack open the Bruins and get a few goals. How about James Reimer? The Leafs looked like they were wet in their pants 30 seconds into the game. Reimer stopping Sagan, he can stop scoring any day now, please. And minutes later, huge giveaway again, and Reimer was forced to make a huge save. And PJ Stock made a great point during intermissions, went on a two-on-one, just get the puck on the net. The Bruins did, and that's how they got their first goal. It wasn't the prettiest two-on-one goal you'll ever see, but if Reimer doesn't grab that puck, the Bruins got the rebound because they crashed the net and they can get by the Leafs' defense. But before that goal... How many odd man rushes did the Leafs have? And I was dying because the Leafs were getting scoring chances but not finishing using exactly what I said to do. Speed and options. They put Lupul with Kessel. I was so happy to see that. And I didn't have mind seeing Grabowski out there on a few shifts. And Colt Knorr, who I've dumped on all season long and gotten dumped on for dumping on him all season long, knocks down Zidane Char. Enough of the Bruins boogeyman. They are a great team. They are not unbeatable. Chara is a big, strong defenseman. You can knock him down. Finally, Lupul on the power play. And I love when Lupul scores because I love his sellies. Yeah, I said selly. Obviously, the whole Leafs team wants to win, but who wants to win more than Lupul? You see it in his face that, yeah! And his second goal. Matt Fratton, I said get him in the lineup. I said utilize the Leafs speed. There you go. He was excellent in the playoffs last year for the Marlies. He's not perfect, but you see the compete in him. Last video, I also said Bozak actually goes to the net. And what does he do on that play? Ah. And they were dumping on Brad Marchand for not covering Lupul on that play. Well, that's what happens against the Leafs if you don't pay attention. Speed and options. That's what guys like Lupul and Fratton bring to the lineup. And of course, my favorite goal, the game-winning goal. Phil Kessel on a breakaway. I haven't seen the original War of the Worlds, but I have seen the 2005 Tom Cruise version, and it reminded me so much of one of the final scenes. When Tom Cruise notices that birds are resting on the giant alien robots, which means the shield must be down. And he's screaming at the soldier with a giant bazooka, LOOK AT THE BIRDS! And that is what happened on this play the second Chara went to the bench. LOOK AT THE GODDAMN BENCH! THE CASTLE IS THE KEY! IT'S GONNA BE A TOUGH GOAL! And this is what happened at Maple Leaf Square in Toronto after. This is from the Maple Leaf's official YouTube channel. Check it out. There hasn't even been a playoff game in Toronto yet. Yet. The Bruins make the Leafs sweat. They bring it within one with a 3-2 goal. Good goal. Bruins goal. But Mikhail Grabowski, speed and skill, damn it, to that Leaf forward in front who is best when he's in front. James Van Riemsdyk, I don't know this because I'm smart. I know it because I have eyes. Sick goal, and that is the dagger. The Leafs take game one and tie it at 1-1. If I can find the blog, I'll put it in the underbar. I spoke to a Flyers fan, very knowledgeable. His name is Jordan Coons. I think I've mentioned this before. I said, what what does JVR got to do to be successful? And he's like, here's what I saw. And one of his biggest complaints was he doesn't always go to the net and sometimes he forgets how big he is. But when he remembers, when he's on his game, he is big enough, strong enough, smart enough, fast enough to make goals like that. And Tuka Rask, as I mentioned in the last video, good goalie, beatable. Teams were getting past the Bruins just like the Leafs were in 2011 when the Bruins won the cup. But Tim Thomas was on one of those crazy Braden Holtby of last year, Dwayne Rollison of the past, J.S. Chaguer of the past, just amazing runs and he covered up a lot of their mistakes. And final thing to mention about the game, the Dion Phaneuf hit on Danny Paillet that some people are talking about. Some Bruins fans are saying it should have been considered for suspension. 
no. Some were saying, and I tend to agree, that was maybe a two-minute minor. And at that point in the third period, yeah, that would have been a huge call. Unfortunately for them, that in the playoffs in the late third period is a non-call nine times out of ten. And most people will acknowledge, too, Phaneuf's not really a player who walks the line. When he kills you, it's perfectly fine. And actually, last thing I want to say, after Lupul's 2-1 goal, they showed these guys on the screen with these awesome blue mask and this like tomahawk thing well one of those guys is actually a buddy of mine but one of the guys he was with one of the guys in that group got knocked out by a bruins fan after the game and he was out for a while and ended up having to be taken to hospital and ambulance my buddy told me his friend is doing fine now and some people were going typical bruins fans typical boston fans and bruins games have a bit of that reputation i was told straight up if i go to the upper bowl i'm gonna get punched in the face there's that YouTube video of that Habs fan who can't even take a piss without getting shoved in the bathroom. And I don't care if you criticize that particular fan, but don't lump all Bruins fans into that stupid group. And we can't act like Leaf fans are angels either. I mean, I've heard plenty of stories from ACC security guards and people online. So don't lump all Boston fans in with this idiot and apparently tough guy because he ran away afterwards. And don't be morons when the playoff games come to Toronto. And that's, uh, like, really soon. Remember it's a game and you ain't playing in it. And remember your, uh, you know, limit. Question of the game that I leave you with. What do you change for game three? My answer is not a damn thing. Please, that is as good as I have seen the Leafs in 2013. They switched four guys out from the game one lineup and put four different guys in keep that whole roster together and try to keep Kessel away from Chara obviously home ice allows you to do that a little more but don't obsess over it the Leafs were as bad as I've seen them in game one and they lost they were as good as I've seen them in game two and they won what will they be in game three I don't know but I freaking love the playoffs that's all for this one. Check out all the links in the underbar, including the post-game blog and analysis of how Chara shuts down other stars in the league. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you after game three. Oh, and join me in my playoff poll, Street Cred. It's in the underbar. I love the playoff. We should do this more often.